I'd also mentioned this was kind of cruddy. This cable, so you can see how it's cocked at an angle there. This tape shouldn't be here, and this head or socket, whatever you want to call it, should be really solidly attached to this cable. I'll show you on another one. So here's another one of my CRT head units. No tape, and you cannot move this at all. The cable goes in there and it's just solid as a rock. You cannot uh, bend this at all. And it's pretty clean and the pins are straight on the other side. Now back to this one. So I use a tape there and it's bent. And if I put my fingernail in there, I can feel that there's a gap here. This needs to be bent over and it's 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 loose. And also screws are corroded and these pins a little bit dirty, got a chip there and one of them's bent a little bit. So I'm gonna take this part. I'm gonna pop these screws off, I'll get the rust off and remove this tape and see if I can get this all seated better and uh, try to clean and straighten out these pins too. Let's see how difficult it is to get this thing opened up. So far so good. Never seen what's inside one of these. I expect it's going to be pretty ugly. There's going to be a whole lot of cable splitting off from here and then somehow going over to these pins. Nasty, nasty. Not just the heads would be rusty, but this is rusty all the way through. I'm gonna be nervous about what I'm gonna find inside here. This must have gotten wet. Yuck. I'll try to dig up some replacements for these rather than trying to remove that rust. Okay. Oh, there's one in the back. Phillips screw. This thing really wants to come apart. Ugh, man. Well, good and bad. It's not as ugly as I thought, but it's got some hot glue or something on there. What I suspect happened is that this cable's been transplanted. That um, perhaps a portion of the cable was damaged and they cut it off and we put it on here, or perhaps this is a different uh, socket entirely. I guess this would be the plug end and the socket's almost on the chassis. This, this sure looks like modern work to me. I hate to even suggest it, but <laughs> I think if I really wanted to clean this up, I'd have to take unsolder all the stuff. Somehow get this crud out of its hot glue. I can melt it out, but I don't think that is hot glue. It feels more, uh, well, like two part epoxy maybe. Because what I'd want to do is get this outer insulation here up higher so it goes up to about here. I'm sure that's why it's so loose because this outer casing, casing ends way down here. It should be. I can pop the other one open. Uh, you know, let's do that for a little comparison and see how these leads should be dressed. I'll be sure to clean this out really good too. Whether I rewire that or not. The screws on this one are certainly in nicer condition. Oh, 
Let's see what's inside. Well, it's actually not that different. It's it's a neater job for sure, but it does also have this hard uh, material inside. It's just a neater job overall, but you can see how this outer vinyl coating goes up much higher inside. That's why the other one is so loose. Hmm. I mean, sure, the other one I can just clean it up and put it back together and leave it as is. And maybe that's the best thing to do for now, rather than try to uh, rewire the whole thing and just to get this up inside. I mean, it works as it is. It's just not as nice as I'd like it to be. Uh, but for sure, I want to clean up those rusty screws, replace them if possible, and clean the pins. This one's got a chip too. I'm guessing that was a common issue because once you take these off the cabinet, these tend to flop around, and I'm sure these whack the floor and get uh, chipped and broken. Of course, I can just keep my eyes out for a replacement. I don't care about the cable. Don't care about this. All I just want is this last. You know, a little end piece. But uh, somehow I don't see that happening anytime soon. I was flipping through this Philco service pocket guide from 59. I've been showing this earlier with the schematic and uh, parts diagram and so on. What I didn't realize was that way in the back they have tube charts for troubleshooting when uh, filament's bad. Filament service charts. Well, check out the one for the 9L38, which is the tandem. So there's the remote AC interlock and the tube inside the CRT. And here's the tuner, and they do have the tubes right, as are, are all of these. However, they've got the wrong tubes in the IF. Those should be three BZ6s. So even the Philco Pocket Service Guide is incorrect. Now, back to this cable. Just ran over to Home Depot and picked up some Gojo Orange Cleaner, which is what I used on another one of these cables, and it cleaned it up real nice, so I'm going to give it a shot on this. And boy, the more I look at this and compare it to the other one, I really do want to try rewiring this. It's not only is it just kind of ugly, but a lot of these wires are melted through the insulation, which may break down over time, and all this electrical tape is just so ugly. And then, of course, the issue of not having this as secure as it could be. So really, the only thing holding me up from just diving right into this is this. What is this? And... Can I get it out? I mean, sure, I got like a Dremel tool with a grind with a like cut out or a, a milling bit, and just dive down into that. But that center um, uh, uh, socket pin feeds through up into here somehow, and I need to solder onto it. And uh, I uh, I don't want to <laughs> break that off. I suppose I can just take a little acetone or something and throw it on there and see if it starts dissolving it, but somehow I really doubt that it would. Or try some heat, too. I wish it was hot glue, but it really doesn't look like hot glue to me. I don't think it's epoxy, though, either, because it didn't flow that well. It's kind of got some stringy bits sticking out, so... Well, I don't know. what it might be Gorilla Glue. I, I really don't know what the heck that is. Alright, let's give this a try. I suppose it uh, wouldn't hurt for me to ask around, play some wanted to buy ads for uh, another Predicta cable or at least that uh, connector part. I've, been, I've noticed that some tandem bits and pieces have been showing up on eBay lately. Somebody's selling one, it's a base unit with, I think it has the, the top CRT unit and the, the cable, but it has no legs. It's kind of ratty looking. And there's another one that has a complete uh, cabinet and, and head unit with cable um, and legs, but it's really, really ratty looking. And both of them are, are asking a lot more than I want, considering I just would want a few bits and pieces from them, not the whole thing. Alright, that's working just fine. It smells very nice. So I'll spend the next... Uh, 
hour or so, cleaning up the entire cable. The more I worked with this glue, the more it came out, until finally the last of it fell away. And I believe all that's left is the original, very hard, seemingly impervious substance. Acetone heat really don't do anything to it. So this, I presume, is the stub of the original high voltage lead. So I need to be very careful not to break any more of that off. And I'll, when I solder the new wire on, I'll try to get down as far in there as possible. Because down here, only got three strands of wire. But I can see there's at least two more here and I think several more down deep in there. Otherwise, I'll just have to oh, get out something, a Dremel tool, and try to go around here and ream that out. But I really don't want to do that. So with that out of the way, I am going to now start on doing all of these wires. And then I'm going to chomp this cable off. I'm going to peel back a bunch of insulation, I'm going to put it side by side with the factory wiring job and try to match it as best I can. Well, I didn't exactly enjoy cutting into that cable knowing it was the point of no return, but I do have a nice clean cable to work with and now I can do see how the wiring is done inside. So we can see on either side, let's see, one side we got six conductors, the other side eight. Those carry, let's see, there should be a pair for the filament juice for the tube, a pair for the AC interlock, various ground uh, B plus supplies, and a coax for the high voltage, for video, and I think one for the horizontal. Oh yeah, and there'll be some wires for the uh, vertical yoke as well. So, that's that. And you can see that each one is a different color, which will come in very, very handy when I wire this up. Well, I shouldn't say that. Two on the bottom left are whitish, and there are two on this side, above and, or to either side of the red and purple that seem to be the same color. So perhaps two of those are the AC and two are the tube filament and it really wouldn't matter which way they hook up. Regardless, I'm uh, taking it, uh, or uh, I'm assuming that this will be identical to the other one I've got that I'm going to be using as a model. And I've taken photos of this. Maybe I better take some more before I completely gut this. Let's see where all the wires go. Wow, what a horrible job. In fact, well, I guess they do have a, all at least have at least a little solder, but some of these look like they're mostly just wrapped on there with maybe a little dot of solder as an afterthought. Well, I'm gonna get all those wires out and clean all that stuff up and get that all nice and polished and clean so when I tin the new wires they will attach very nicely. I started cutting away the vinyl outer sheathing partly to make it easier to remove these wires and partly to get some practice before I try it on the real thing. And uh, it, uh, it is a little bit of work. Because, you can tell a little bit from looking at the inside of this, the wires are twisted. They're not running straight through this. So you see like here we've got, going clockwise, red, gray, purple, gray. But if you look on the other side, purple's on top and red's on the bottom. So. Those wires are spiraling as they go down the cable. So when you slice this, now the big ones are easy to get at, so I went right down the middle. And then you can just kind of pry this apart in the, the thick, heavy um, insulated wires pop out. Because, of course, I don't want to 
nick the insulation while I'm getting these out. Now I can also see why electrical tape was in here. I peeled all that off too. So here's the high voltage cable and he nicked, oh, slid open the insulation here, tacked on a wire and ran it over here onto this shielding over to that point which wants to be ground. The original one is not dressed like that. Uh, I think it's uh, the high voltage curves this way and the ground is all just one continuous. Goes over that way. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a little tricky to slice this open and not nick the insulation. But I will go very slowly, very carefully, just using a Stanley knife. And I will be uh, just, <laughs> just carefully, bit by bit, slicing down here, free of each wire. I figure I'll leave myself a generous amount to work with, maybe start like sl slicing it off back here. Of course, the further back I go, the harder it's going to be to get off because I'll have more twists and turns to, to deal with. And I want to make very sure that when I'm done, I've got this vinyl sheathing coming up to about here. So when I clamp this all back together, it's held in there very firmly. Again, I'll use the other connector as my model.